Hey, this is Wileen Benson, and you are on the Daily Gratitude Call, where we start every day in gratitude. Gratitude is the highest energy state that we can be in. It creates a frequency of positive vibration that attracts positive experiences into our lives. Hey everybody, this is Wileen Benson. This is our daily gratitude call. Thank you for joining our call today. Uh, look forward to what we get to learn today. Um, today, uh, it might sound like kind of a funny thing to focus on, but um, gratitude for one size fits all. And we can just thank our Heavenly Father for that inspiration because uh, I think it was Robert said he was grateful for medium when he can't decide if small or large is better. <laughs> and I think that's kind of what sparked it. But um, those were the words that came to me. So we are going to focus on gratitude for one size fits all and uh, see what comes up. I'm going to set the timer for 90 seconds. I'm going to do a private silent meditation and then we'll share. So 90 seconds. Gratitude for one size fits all begins now. All right. Um, I think that phrase one size fits all when I think about, um, you know, like having a tag in the back of a shirt or something, you know, that says one size fits most is usually what they say. Now it used to say one size fits all. Now what I mostly see is one size fits most, which I think is probably a little more accurate, but, um, what it uh, that phrase tells us is that there are different sizes. There are going to be different sizes. There's um, it's expected that there's different sizes, and um, so there's like no judgment about you know which size. It like there there is no one size. <laughs> there's no one size. Um, it's expected that we're all going to have different body shapes, different body types, different height, different, you know, width, <laughs> everything. And I'm so grateful for, um, stretchy fabrics. Um, I remember when Lycra was invented, I think it was either the late seventies or the early eighties and how much more comfortable clothes were when they had just a little bit of lycra in them. And uh, these one size fits all clothing, uh, I think are really supposed to be sort of loose and comfortable. And it just is like a really feel good thing. And uh, just kind of the last thought that came to me is that there's, um, when it, there's a lot of things that one size fits all, like prayer fits all. Um, you know, things like that. And in those situations where uh, it, everything, 
that everybody fits into this, you know, we all kind of in the same boat. Um, there's no reason to compare. We're all, we're all in the same. Yeah, we all, we all are the same size as far as that goes. Um, let's see, Robert and then Lara and then Phil. Well, I laughed through most of my um, meditation uh, time because I kept picturing myself it's like a guy who's standing in front of my car door with a Coke in one hand and a hamburger in the other trying to figure out how to open the car door. <laughs> and, 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 but the, the thought changed from there to how, although it may appear one size fits all, the, the detrimental side to not being able to make a decision is a thought that I've had for quite some time. I heard about a story of a man going down the stairs in one of the towers before they collapsed. Oh, mm -hmm. On his way down, he met a woman with a group of people on their way up. She had proclaimed with the stairways filled with smoke, there's no way out. The roof is the only option. And with her group of people, as he described mm -hmm. her, uh, with a group of people, they headed up. He headed down. And I thought to myself, could I have made that decision mm. without, with my trust of women, would I have made that decision to still go down or to put my trust in this woman who I did not know, or would not have known to go up one lived others did not so oh. making that decision isn't uh, in absence of clarity isn't always in our best interest wow that is so profound robert um i i'm just realizing that when we are faced with a decision a lot of times we choose the one size fits all because we can't make a decision or because we're not certain about which one really fits us, you know, which one really is the one that we choose and how important it is for us to be able to make a decision based on, you know, choosing according to me and what feels right for me. Thank you. Especially in that moment of mm -hmm. live or die. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Laura and then Phil and Colleen. Well, my mind went a completely different direction. I thought about salvation and how the cross is one size fits all. Mm -hmm. So there was, and I'm really grateful for that, that there's no, um, you know, there's, there's no difference in my belief. The way I believe is that, um, you know, that it doesn't matter that sins are all sin because they, they separate from God. Mm -hmm. So there is no greater or lesser than, and so the cross, you know, when Jesus made his sacrifice on the cross, he, um, gave all of us the no matter what no matter mm -hmm. what the opportunity to be one with him and mm -hmm. um that opportunity is unbelievably amazing and you know people never have to worry even though we end up doing that whether we're good enough or you know, oh, well, you know, some people, you know, you've heard people say, well, what I've done can never be forgiven. Mm -hmm. but that, that's never true. Mm -hmm. Because the cross, what Jesus did for us, there's no difference. Um, there's, there's a one size fits all one cross fits all. I love that. Beautiful. Thank you. And that is my uh, belief as well, that 
any sin, all sin takes us away from God, takes us out of alignment with the highest Mm -hmm. version of ourselves. And, and so, you know, like you say, um, it's all, they're all the same, you know, all, Mm -hmm. all sin is a one size fits all. And, uh, and so why not, you know, and, and I believe that as well, that his atonement is, um, fits all. Thank you. Yeah. Beautiful. Phil. So as I thought about this, I thought about um, like, does one size fit all? Fit all? And, um, but there are some constants and some of those constants that came to my mind were consequences, mm-hmm. lo- love, um, light, time while in the physical world. And these are all constants that we that we can just rely on Mm -hmm. that are going to like it's there for everybody no matter their shape size or what's going on in their life they they're they're constant beautiful yes and how wonderful it is that we can rely on um those things that fit everyone thank you Even the consequences. Yes, Yes. even the consequences, the choices that we make and the consequences or the rewards that come from whatever those choices are. Thank you. Um, Colleen and then Deep T. I I was thinking um, one size fits all versus tailor-made. And one size fits all fits everything in, in gratitude for the Savior. But yet our specific relationship with him is tailor-made. It is so specific in design that it can bring you to exactly the place you want to be on the Lord's side, knowing what his plan is, fighting for what he wants us to fight for, not kicking against the pricks. I love that statement because it catches everybody's attention. And I just, you know, so many things that they, they are promoting often is just kicking against the pricks. Awesome. It, it, it's nonsense. <laughs> yeah. I love um, that idea of tailor-made versus one size fits all. I, I know in our Lord's Way to Wealth Mastermind um, group, there's, there's all of these rules that are on, you know, these higher laws that are on the Lord's path. And eventually at some point you have to make the choice. Am I just going to gather the knowledge and just know the laws the higher laws, or am I actually going to put these into place and create something that is according to my specific purpose and the, the specific people, the stewardship that I have um, over specific people, um, you know, that God has given me to serve. And, and, and then at that point, we take um, God as our partner and asking every day for specifics that create a business, you know, tailor-made to me and to the people that I get to serve. And so there is a one size fits all. And then there's also, I love what you're saying there, that there's a tailor-made relationship that we create specifically for them for, you know, for, with uh, God ourselves. Thank you. Uh, Deep T and then Laura has something else. Oh, no, I don't. I'm sorry. I forgot to mute. (laughs) Thanks. Deep T. So what came to me is absolutely something different, but uh, I thought of uh, education because uh, it is, you know, it is seemed that one size fits all, but mm-hmm. that's absolutely not correct because uh, different, uh, there can be t- different teaching styles, there can be different students with different capacities, they can be a slow Mm -hmm. learner, they can be a fast learner, they can have different unique talents. So I think there should be different curriculums, Mm -hmm. or there should be different teaching styles to, uh, you know, accommodate that uh, individual, uh, you know, from because the most learning years and the most beliefs are then like if it is a slow learner in the classroom, and they assume that one size fits all, and they keep, you know, educating on a particular subject, the slow learner is going to feel left out and it's it's going to drive him to those limiting beliefs mm-hmm. right then and there. So I think one size uh, 
as far as the education uh, industry is concerned, it definitely one size doesn't fit all. Beautiful. Thank you. And I know that it's one of your dreams to be a teacher and how wonderful um, that you're bringing this knowledge into the education system. I know a lot of times um, teachers don't have as much flex- flexibility and freedom as you know maybe they would like. Um, I 100% agree with what you're saying. And uh, I know because of the kind of upset that COVID-19 caused with the education system where kids, you know, were brought home to be educated and, you know, there's some of the schools being opening, opened up and everything. We have a new school that's being built about, um, I don't know, half a mile from my home. And I remember driving by there one day and looking at this huge school, middle school that's being built. And I thought, I wonder what that building's going to be used for, because seriously, I felt like education must evolve there. I I don't see how it can stay the way it was with all that we know now. And that pattern interrupt that has happened. I I really do see the education is um, it it really should be um, upgraded to what you're saying. I definitely, I definitely think that one subject, like we have a lot of, we have math and we have English and we have literature and the normal right. common subjects. I definitely think there should be one subject called as life skills. Yes, definitely life skills. And like you said, there's different ways to teach. Some people uh, learn more by doing, some people learn by reading, you know, or hearing, uh, by visually, you know, seeing someone do something. So there's, there's a lot of different ways to teach. That's where the STEM education comes into play, which is not very uh, well known in India yet, but I'm aware of the STEM education. Awesome. Awesome. Keep going (laughs) with that. I think that's definitely a a great thing to focus on. Uh, Laura, did you think of something else? I did just with my, uh, yeah, with what DT was saying that, um, you know, the other thing, the other ones um that get left behind are the incredibly intelligent yes Um, they get very much left behind because you know they're expected to push put themselves in a little box that doesn't fit Mm -hmm. and um and so yeah it's um that's just another thing that I experienced I saw when I was teaching so I taught for 12 years DT I don't know if you know that um but what I saw was that really intelligent kids who didn't really um, learn this in the style that the school system was propagating would do what I called the fourth grade checkout. And they would just stop performing in fourth grade. And everyone was just like, Oh, I don't understand. So-and-so has so much potential. I don't understand. You know, well, I knew. So anyway, awesome. that's all that is. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I think we have, we here on this call have powerful uh, creative abilities. And so if we focus on, uh, I was thinking that this morning in my daily GPS about focusing on what we lack versus focusing on what we have and what we want to create, there's so much more power in focusing what we want to create and seeing it as a reality you know, that's, that's what really brings where the universe starts setting things up so that that can actually come to be. We, we have a lot of power here to, to do that. Uh, Mary and then Tyree. Um, a couple things I thought of at the beginning were um, being grateful for the um, certain things that do, that do fit all or, or most. Mm-hmm. One size fits all. The world, it fits all at some point or another. It fits all of us. Um, and I was thinking about the large can fit the small, say mm-hmm. a blanket, large can fit a small. You can put it on, you can use it. Not necessarily a small fitting a large, but um, you can get something out of anything. Mm-hmm. Another thought I had um, about the, you know, the one size fits all you can get something out of, out of anything. Beautiful. And yeah. I guess that's about it. Thank you. I am reminded of uh, when I was in Peru and hiking 
on one of the Inca trails, the Lara's Trek, and they provided sleeping bags for us. And the people in Peru are pretty small. And uh, when I got in the sleeping bag, I had to kind of, and it was a mummy bag. <laughs> so there wasn't a whole lot of room for me to like scrunch my feet up, my legs up. Um, but it wasn't tall enough. It uh, hit me just below my shoulders. And I like to really cuddle up, you know, and bring my, and it got down to 32 degrees in the night in our tents. And so I, and I like to be able to pull my blankets up over, you know, over my shoulders, usually at home. And so, yeah, I was able to get some use out of that. I didn't freeze to death. I was able to get some really good use out of that sleeping bag. However, I prefer a little longer sleeping bag. <laughs> and so I love that idea of just using what you've got because you can get use out of whatever you have. But then also knowing that there is, um, if it's not exactly perfect, you have the power to create and to bring something else into your life. I love that. Thank you. Um, Tyree. So just going back to education and children, I, I started to understand as a parent having children that every child has their own genius, mm -hmm. even children that we don't typically view as gifted or smart. They have a genius. We just need to learn to see it. And my oldest child is crazy talented in so many different areas so people see that she's super gifted because she's so good in so many obvious areas whereas my second she is very gifted but it's in more subtle ways like emotionally and I just think that that Christ fits all because he sees individual mm. specific genius but sometimes our world is not like Deep T was talking about. Our education system is absolutely not <clears throat> designed to fit all because it doesn't, it, it isn't designed to capture and to see genius. And I'm so grateful that we have, that we have revelation and intuition and different things that can help us to recognize and we can receive spiritual gifts to help us see and minister to those with specific spiritual gifts so that we can help them develop those. I love that idea of ministering to those people who have, you know, and seeing through Christ's eyes, you know, seeing with charity, all people in their, um, the gifts that they have, the genius that they have inside. That's such a powerful um, thing. That's such a um, life-changing thing that we can do for other people. Um, what you're saying about each child having it, having their own gift is so absolutely true. I do something that I call a purpose call. And one of those, one of the um, exercises that I do on that purpose call is I help, uh, help you go back to your childhood and identify what those natural gifts are that have been kind of, you know, quote, beat out of you because, you know, whether it was like you were too different, you know, you needed to come to be one size fits all within the family or within school or in society or whatever. It's like, use your inside voice. Well, my inside voice is loud. <laughs> I have a loud voice. That's one of my great geniuses, you know, but you have to learn how to subdue those, those geniuses to fit within the family or the school or within your friends or whatever. So yeah, it's, and it's totally true. Every single person I've done, I, I've done hundreds of these um, purpose calls with people and every single one is completely unique and different. And they're all like beautiful, amazing gifts. Uh, Laura, did you have uh, one last I thought? I just wanted to say super quick that okay. um, Tyree, the way that you just said that was so inspired and beautiful and powerful. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to, to say that, that that was the way that you just said that was amazing. And Deep T just put in the chat. So true, Tyree. Thanks for putting it in better words than me. <laughs> and then she says, laugh out loud. I said the same thing, Laura. <laughs> right? Yes, Tyree, you need to listen to this recording again and uh, just well, note it your gift. Yes, yes. That's what I wanted. Yeah, I just wanted to shine light on that incredible genius that just came through you. 
Beautiful. Beautiful. I want to, I'm going to go ahead and read what you wrote, Laura, as well. Um, yes, we'll have to talk about it sometime with Deep T. Is that um, who you were talking to? Yes, she said she okay. didn't know I was teach. I was a teacher. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. and I I just want to read this because this is applicable to what we we're uh, talking about. Um, Laura says I wasn't trained in teaching either, but I found a job and it all worked out perfectly. Total miracle. I worked on the San Carlos Apache Reservation, and definitely there are you know different cultures, different uh, backgrounds. Yeah, you know. That, it was uh, an incredible to be aware experience. Of. I, I literally just showed up. Um, I went with a friend to the reservation and I sat down in this next to the school at a picnic table because it was available. Mm -hmm. And this woman came out and I was like, hmm, I wonder if they have a teaching job. <laughs> <laughs> like literally. <laughs> and you know what? It's probably you probably did a better job because you hadn't been trained. Yeah. I mean, they trained me, which was amazing. Yeah. Um, and I, um, yeah, it was, it was, it, there's so many stories from that, but the way it happened, it was such, it was just such a miracle that I, you know, it was totally a God thing. So I wanted to encourage deep tea with that because, you know, it's yeah. always possible. I ended yeah. up getting my teacher certification later. So anyway, awesome. yeah. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> and what a great testament of, you know, just the miracles that can happen when we're open to it. You know, you could easily exactly. have said, well, I don't have a teaching degree. Like, why would I, you know, there's right. no way why I can't, I whatever, right. but yeah, it's like, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do That's this. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Um, it's like DT has one last thought and then we'll go on to our permission process. Well, I just wanted to thank uh, Lara on call and not on chat. Oh, thank you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love you guys. Thank you so much. Um, let's go ahead and shift into our permission process. Go ahead and take a deep breath. And just feel the gratitude of all that has been shared and the things that have been opened up. Oh my word, you know, like we, before we started this call, there's like this idea of one size fits all. You have to have a teaching certificate to teach in school and you have to teach a certain way and education is this and that and, and all the different things that we've introduced and so many more possibilities um, well beyond the bounds of the one size fits all. And also we have um, just expressed gratitude for what has been shared about the difference between one size fits all and tailor-made and that there is a beautiful tailor-made life for you that you get to choose. There's um, just by, based on looking around it, yes, we have resources that we can get use out of. We can use what we've got. And then we can also create something that it fits us even better, just fits us like a glove that is tall enough to fit over your shoulders <laughs> and take a deep breath and just be aware of all of those things, the circumstances in your life right now that do fit so wonderfully and perfectly. And some of those things that are one size fits all like faith and the atonement and love and light and beauty, nature's beauty all around us, the world that we live in. So many things are one size fits all. And then there is a tailor-made experience for each one of us within those one size fits all experiences. There's a tailor-made experience in nature for you. There is a tailor-made experience in faith for you, in love so many different wonderful things that we get to experience personally and that we have all together on the same page have in common and that brings us together as one and as you're um, getting clear with some of these one size fits all things that maybe you have been experiencing where you really need a tailor-made experience I invite you to be aware of the one area in your life right now that could really use a tailor-made experience, that the one size fits all is either too small or too big or is worn out, got holes in it, been using it too long. 
it's just time to throw it out and get a tailor-made version. So let intuition tell you which of the areas of your life is the most important for you to upgrade to tailor-made right now. And as you're becoming aware of that tailor-made experience that is waiting for you, um, take a moment and just envision what the tailor-made looks like, feels like, that fitting like a glove and how much more comfortable that is for you, fitting your natural genius. And also listen for any limiting beliefs that might be coming up as you are creating this tailor-made experience for yourself in your, in your vision, in your imagination, in your God space. And as we know that uh, this intangible experience, what we learned yesterday or the day before, the intangible experience is the precursor to the physical experience. And that you, actually all of it is intangible. Everything is energy. So as you're creating this imagination vision, um, just know that this is just as physical as the physical reality is. We just need to speed up the molecules a little bit, a little bit more. And what are the limiting beliefs that are coming up for you? And examine the cost of that, of those limiting beliefs. And if you don't like what the outcome that those limiting beliefs will produce, then you have the choice right now to give yourself permission to choose some new beliefs that will produce a different outcome that you will like and that will be in alignment with your vision. And so if you're ready to let go of that limiting belief and step into a new new beliefs that will fit you even better. Give yourself permission by saying yes. 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 Awesome. So then choose a couple of new beliefs, two to three new beliefs that will take the place of that old limiting belief will align with this new vision that you are creating, upgrading to tailor-made experience specifically for you what new beliefs are going to serve you. And then take a moment after you have written those two to three new beliefs and just put them on just like you are trying on a brand new tailor-made suit. Just try these new beliefs on, see how they feel, see how they fit. If you need to give it back to the, the tailor and say, I mean, this needs to be taken in just a little bit more here. We need to let it out just a little bit more here. We need to allow a little more possibility. We need to become a little bit more uh, aligned. You know, there needs to be just a little bit uh, less room to fluctuate here. We need to give, a, you know, create just a little more specific you know, whatever it is that needs just a little bit more tailoring on that new belief, go ahead and take the time to do that. And then try it on again and see how it feels, see how it fits, see if it fits with that new vision that you've created that tailor-made vision. And then take a deep breath and just feel the freedom of movement, how much more uh, confident you feel standing up straight in this new tailor-made outfit feels so much better, looks so much better. It looks good on you and uh, gives you the confidence that you need to step forward. And as we know that confidence and all of these things come from within, but it comes from within as you are aligned with who you are meant to be. And having this new tailor-made um, vision all around you and within you with these new beliefs. What is the one most important thing that you can do today? The first act in this tailor-made situation, circumstance. What is the first thing that you can do that will um, ensure your ability to have this tailor-made experience and that you'll be able to remain there, that it will be, it will become part of you, almost like a second skin, like fitting like a glove. What is your inspired shortcut today to having this be um, 
who you are. And when people look at you, they see the tailor-made version. They see the tailor-made circumstance around you. What's your inspired shortcut? First step to creating that tailored main vision. That's your inspired shortcut today. In a moment, I'm gonna open it up for some shares. Um, I would like to also invite, if there's anyone who needs some extra support in creating that tailor-made experience, I would love to have uh, a conversation with you. All you have to do is just go to askwileen.com and that will take you to my calendar and you can schedule a 15 minute call, askwileen.com. It's a free mentoring session. Who has something that they would like to share about their experience today? Deep tea? Uh, while the meditation was on and you were specifically focusing on tailor-made, what really came to me is what we always do is we like become a pe uh, uh, people pleaser or we, you know, wear on beliefs or energy or things of the world and other people get their hands on us. So I think the more tailor-made and the more uh, authentic you become as God made you, uh, that's the size made for you mm. from God. And that is what we should always, uh, you know, uh, that's, that's the target or that's the mission I want to reach on, the one that's made for me. I love that. Absolutely love that. That leaves so much room for God to work in your life. I choose the tailor-made life that is made for me. What did you say? Yes, <laughs> say it again. that's I don't know. I was speaking okay. up, but that's what I said. <laughs> all right. We have it yeah, on the recording. I just want, yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. And that's all we have to do is just choose that life and God will create it for us. The universe will create it for us. I love yeah. it. Thank you. Okay, stay unmuted for just a second so I can get your uh, names written down. We've got Colleen and Mary and uh, Tyree. So we'll go in that order. Colleen, Mary, Tyree. I, I was thinking about, you know, how much gratitude gives you lift, but if you look a little deeper, it gives you so much more and it can help you in your tailor-made. And I just feel like gratitude if you made a list of all of the gifts it is, if it, it would be so overwhelming and heartwarming, but it also goes us into action and, and not to just fight, you know, that kicking against the pricks is against um, a, a shepherd or whatever would be behind the oxen poking the oat to go forward. And if he kicked against the pricks, then he got another one, you know? So sometimes those, those little, the gratitude can move you to action, to, to go forward, to, to, to jump and to try things. I love that. And I know Laura is always saying what you resist persists. So the more that you resist, the, the more resistance that's going to continue to come to you. And I love what you're saying about the, the person inside of that tailor-made experience, standing tall with gratitude, with confidence, you're going to get a lot better result with your tailor-made experience than if you walk into it with your shoulders hunched and your head down, your, that experience is not going to look or feel or, you know, be able to be tailored as well as if we're standing in alignment. Um, I love that idea too. Thank you, Mary. I was thinking of, um, and that's so true that that which you resist persists. I, I say that all the time. I see it in my life and others. But I was thinking about the um, how when you are when when you are discovering your tailor made version. Um, my my new one of my new beliefs. Well, is I am a tailor made version of myself. Beautiful and. I noticed that there's a ton of limiting beliefs that I, that are like shooting all over the place. <laughs> and I think that those are tailor made for, mm -hmm. you know, for us and being able to recognize those and then uh, tailor those, you know, to the, to your, to your good. 
um, is one of the things I thought of. So anyways, I'm a tailor-made version of myself. I'm clear and conscious and I'm attracting the clients I can help. Beautiful. I love that. And I love that idea that our limiting beliefs are tailored to us as well, based on, you know, past experience or whatever. And we can, t- and we tailor made our, make our new ex- um, beliefs to, uh, to the new life that we're choosing too. Thank you. I love that. Um, Tyree, and then we'll go ahead and end. Oh, it looks like Tyree dropped off. Maybe she was not able to stay on. All right. Well, we are going to go ahead and end our call. Thank you so much, everybody that has shared and just for being here, just for creating this experience together. Um, This call is really a mastermind and uh, I just love um, everything that gets created. Colleen, did you have something that you'd like to share real quick before we end? No, I'm sorry. Okay. You're fine. You're fine. I know sometimes people uh, unmute so that they can say thanks or (laughs) something as well. Okay. I appreciate that. (laughs) Love you guys. Thank you so much. Um, We will look forward to being back together tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. And uh, we'll talk to you then. Thank you. Thank thank you, Eileen. Hey, thanks so much for listening. And I encourage you to tune in every day to the Daily Gratitude Call. And the Daily Gratitude Call happens live every weekday morning. I'd love to have you join. So to find out how to join live, go to my website, wileenbenson.com. Thanks for tuning in.